Kudelski, welcome to the executive talk. We uh, meet at the headquarters of Kudelski on a special day because you communicated your half year results. Uh, I think it's fair to say that they haven't been so positive, so you had a net loss to communicate. I was wondering, on a personal level, for an executive, how hard are it these days if, if you don't have just good news to tell to everyone? You should not look at what is happening today. You need to look forwards where you are going. And what is absolutely key as an executive is to be able to make abstraction of some elements that can be painful short term in order to achieve your medium long term goals. So fundamentally, and that is how we have looked at that, we were active and very successful in a market that was structurally shrinking. Mm -hmm. Then we have taken the decision to invest in new sector that will be ensuring part of the future of the group. But in order to be really relevant in this market, you need to make some important investment that do that for some period of time you are loss making in this element. And today we are just in the middle of this transformation, we have behind us the most painful one and now we are starting to build the next phase. But if you look all that together, if you are not ready to suffer in such a process, it's very difficult to construct a brighter future. How easy is that for, for yourself to be able to look into the future and say, this is exactly the right thing that we're doing, even if it's painful, if it's uh, painful that for another for, two years? That is so? for me absolutely fundamental because at the end, you need to be able to take the decision yourself and not basically have the decision made by others. If you just look how to please short term the public or the mm -hmm. shareholder, then you are not in control of your destiny because you will just do what will be pleasing short term. At the end, what you need is to achieve certain goals in a way that you go where you consider it's right to go. When, you've, when you feel pressure, for example, from shareholders, because of course mm. then the, the, mm. the stock price goes down, people get nervous, uh, is it easy for you as well to, to, to explain it to them and to really say, look, I think we're on the right path and just, just bear with me, bear with us, and it'll, it'll come as it is. It's it not easy, but it's absolutely essential because at the end, or you do something that you are convinced, mm. or you have to do another job. Fundamentally, you need to do something that you think is the right thing for your company. Is it something that's ingrained in you as well? You're, you're, you're always described as someone very, very strategic, someone who's, who's heavily depending on facts. Uh, you studied physics, that probably helps as well in that regard. That you, you've always been that way, that you, you see something in the future and, and you see that goal and then you, you, can, you can kind of phase out what, what, what happens now? That is one part, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. And that is, once more, my lesson from physics, is that you don't have just one reality, you have different perception of reality, and you may have different roads to get where you want to go. And that is and in business as well? Yes, and so fundamentally, there is not just one solution, you have different possible solutions, you have different probability, and you have to find a route that is resilient according to how things will evolve. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot, you cannot predict in certainty how the future will be. You have some probability that you have to handle with this probability. You may know that something bad will happen if you stay on one road, but to know which one you have to take is something that is a little bit more uh, sophisticated and you have not only one alternative road, you may have many of them. Uh, that's so interesting what you say because you, you're, your company stands for that. You're, you're a company in full transition, you said it yourself, in a transformation and that has been going on, that's almost like a theme 
uh, to Kudelski. Of course, you 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 started. Nagra, which 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 was a famous uh, a famous tool in itself. Uh, then you, you were one of the pioneers of digital TV with the set top boxes. Uh, then you changed once again. Uh, now you're going more into uh, security, IT security, cyber security, into into Internet of Things. So to be in constant transformation is that something that that you almost look for? I sometimes have the feeling that you 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 kind of feed from that as well, from that constant change. That is part of our DNA, is to be able to handle change. And the worst thing is complacency. So basically, mm -hmm. to be in a situation where everything will be forever static. Now, where we have maybe to improve things is to be faster in the way we change and being able to be more dynamic in the way we approach change. Uh, of course, then we talk about change management. That's something that the whole team must bear and must, must go along with. Uh, do you find it difficult to convey your principles or your theories or your ideas to I the whole say, team? I would say that it's really difficult when everything is going too well. And I'm often saying that the best decisions are made when you have challenging time, because you have external condition, external facts that ask yourself to question yourself. You're forced to. Yes. When everything is doing well, then a lot of people think that there is only their own merit to have a situation that is good and not the external factors. And in reality, it's always a combination between external factors and your own behavior. Mm -hmm. And one of the most interesting elements is that when everything is going well, then it's extremely difficult to convince people, especially in the middle or medium high level of management, that there is time to change. Why is that? Because they have so much to lose or because they don't because, see... No, the, the, the question is that Sometimes people are not questioning about themselves, but they are looking at the result and they believe that everything that has been done was right because mm. the result is good. But what is interesting is that if you read some uh, psychological study, you have a lot of that is also happening with animals in laboratory, like mm -hmm. the rats, that are starting to be superstitious if they do a certain pattern in terms of move and suddenly they get some foods as uh, awards. So just to say that it's a very natural behavior. If we take that image of laboratory and of, of what you talked about before, that being a little bit too complacent, you often talked about it in interviews that that might be something that the Swiss have too much of that we're we're kind of we're doing well and everybody's happy with what they achieved and and the economy is still doing well do you think that's one of the the biggest challenges for this country as well i, I know you're a very I, active citizen so that's I, why i would I say you. yes and no because you have number of activity or sector where what is really important is quality of execution and continuity but the issue is not when you are in the normal evolution. And you have a number of activities that for years have been able to live in a continuum. But when you have major disruption, that's when it's a little bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. And I must say that you have other countries that are good at managing uh, disruption, but not good at managing everyday just excellent. So there are two different qualities. And in reality, in a company, like in a country, you need to have the two personality. So ones that are extremely good at executing and being able to deliver quality every day, even if it's boring. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, people that are ready to say, oh, but here we need to think that if that is changing, we need to adapt ourselves in a much more uh, radical way. So fundamentally, managing uh, disruption is not something so easy. But do you think Switzerland lacks people like you, more people like you, 
who are more forward thinking, who are more uh, uh, daring, more I, audacious as well? I, I would say that if you look at facts, Switzerland has performed extremely well. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not saying that there is a lack of people thinking in a more disruptive way until now that Switzerland has been very successful. The future will tell it. So it's very difficult to predict, but sometimes in some sectors you need to have some people that are thinking in a disruptive way. Take also watch industry with uh, Nicola Hayek that at a certain time was the right person that mm -hmm. was thinking in a disruptive way. But after, you may need some people that are more able to capitalize on what has been done. So you cannot <coughs> say that at any given time you need people that are able to manage disruption. You may need also some people that are really here to manage continuity. Uh, to find those disruptors, was that also a reason why you moved part of the business to the United States? You have a second headquarters in, in Phoenix yes, now? Yes, that is. Part of the element is to have access to a diversity of talents. But having said that, we consider that Switzerland is second to none for some type of talent, including in the engineering. Mm -hmm. On the other side, you have some people thinking a little bit more outside of the box that you find in the US, and the combination between the two ways of thinking is probably one of the best you can find. Having said that, do you stay in Switzerland? So I'm part of my time in Switzerland, but today I'm living in the US. You personally yes. spent two thirds, I think, of, yes. of, of yes. your year in yes. the US. But I was talking about the business. Do you see the business going to, to the US completely? Because no, no. The I market think, is there. No, right? so, market, so the most important market in our different sector is in the US. Mm -hmm. But I think that our strength is to combine the strength from both sides. I would say that if we would be just a U.S. company, would be missing something, as to be just a Swiss organization would be missing something. But by the way, most uh, international Swiss organizations are very good at uh, feeling how the things are happening in other countries. One of the key uh, uh, properties of Switzerland you do 200 kilometers in any direction from any point in Switzerland you get outside of the country. Mm -hmm. And that is fundamentally this ability to understand that you have people that are thinking in a different way, not wired in the same way. So we are open in that way, even uh, yes, maybe contrary to the cliche sometimes but that Switzerland we are a bit too... Switzerland is extremely open and overall the Swiss people are extremely well understanding what is happening in the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I was talking to the to the citizen Andre Kuzetsky before because I, mm -hmm. I know you are you are very involved in these questions and you are you're one of of, of the more outspoken uh, entrepreneurs of this country that when when you see something that you don't like or when you see something that should be should be changed uh, you 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 talk about it as well why is that do you feel a, a responsibility as as a as an executive as well to to raise your Hello. voice so I, w I will start by the way I'm think politics and the way the Swiss political system is working. Mm -hmm. It's fundamentally based on Millis system. So basically saying that with very few exceptions, you have no professional politician. As a citizen, you do your military service, you may serve in different political positions, directly or indirectly. As you did, for example, exactly. on a local and basis. Yeah. But for me, that's extremely important because we are living in a connected society. And one, one of the most important elements is to have people that are in charge of the country that are not completely disconnected from the reality. And for me, that is also valid for people that are in the business, they need to understand how people in the streets and in the politics are thinking. Mm -hmm. In a way that you have a constructive interaction. That's for me extremely important. But maybe it's also linked with the element that as I'm an entrepreneur since many years, I also need to have this interaction to stay tuned with what is happening in the mm -hmm. world. How much of it is is because you're uh, 
you're a family company at its core. You, you, you took over from your father in the 90s. Uh, the, fa the, the company has your name attached to it. So that makes it probably more approachable yes, and more as part of the society as, a, as, a, as an anonymous uh, uh, company with, with, with some, some name. Is that part of it as well? That you it's part of it, but I, I would say it's a tradition in Switzerland. Yeah. You have, and at least for decades that was the case, maybe today it's a little bit less usual, but it's extremely important because if you have a generation of executives that have no links that are or emotional or uh, even, uh, how to say, pragmatic with the environment, that's very difficult. But uh, look, and what is interesting is that even in the US, I get a foot in the door and I have some interaction in the same way as I have them in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. But what is fascinating is when you are living in the States, you have a completely different view from Switzerland. And what is most... More surprised, positive or more negative? So most of the element, very positive. Yeah. And I would say that we are not enough uh, totally knowledgeable about the quality of Switzerland, the quality of people the quality of institution, and we need to see that from outside to really understand how positive is Switzerland. Uh, since we're talking to someone who's, who's very interested in political questions, I have to ask you about one of the biggest challenges mm -hmm. of Switzerland at the moment is its uh, relationship to Europe. Where do you see Switzerland in that regard? Where do you see uh, the whole situation or might I even say the problem uh, with, the, with the framework agreement, for example, that we're, that we're still lacking with the EU? So I think that personally I consider that Switzerland is pragmatic. Europe is not always so pragmatic. And so if you look at all the Brexit question, mm. so we cannot say that uh, UK has been always uh, brilliant in that. But it shows that the things are not so easy. Now, practically, between Switzerland and European Union, I think a framework agreement is something that is making sense, but we have just to be careful to not bring Switzerland as a country and for its citizen into a situation that is unsound. And I have personally less worry for the economical part and the political system where de facto you have too many things that will be just automatically imported in terms of rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. uh, change of subject, when, when I talked about the, the, the family business and, and the family name attached to that business, was that ever a burden for you? That you, 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 you are so attached to a business and you know that everything depends on you and your name? I would say that it's putting the bar higher mm -hmm. and give you really one extra motivation to deliver. Because you know that your name is on the building, your name is a company name, and then you must deliver. Mm -hmm. And you cannot just once more look at the element short term and to say after, I don't care. No, you care about the future. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is a burden, but at the same time, that's a very strong motivation. Let's look at that future for, for a second, because as I said, the, 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 the transition is going on, the transformation is going on. Where do you see the big topics of, of the future? I mean, you, you go heavily, I said it, you go heavily into the Internet of Things, for example, or, or, or the, the, the IT and, and, and cybersecurity. Do you think those are the, are the, the pillars of, of the company in five, ten years' time? I, I, I would say that if I'm looking forward, I see few elements that are very strong. After you may have some variation. One element that I consider as structurally extremely important going forward is the Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons, so one of our core competency is security. And in the Internet of Things, 
it's something absolutely paramount. If someone is hacking your email account, that's unpleasant, but it will not, except in some very specific condition, kill you. If someone is hacking your car or hacking, how do you say, the airline yeah, you are flying planes, on. Yeah. It's a question of life and death. It's like, exactly. Yeah. So the needs in terms of security in the Internet of Things is much, much higher. And so it requires a lot of element. Now, having said that, I personally believe that there is a future and a future for our company in television. It will be different from the television we used to know, but there are still very interesting things to be done. Do you just say that because it's the tradition of Kudelsk as well? Or is it really something that you see that's still a business model that will go on? Because there are other voices that say, I mean, maybe you should, you should leave that part all, all together. If you look at what we have seen in the last few years, it's in reality a very resilient mm -hmm. A business. Now, where it's more challenging is to find new growth opportunities. And it's, I'm not saying that they're not existing. I'm convinced there are some interesting elements. But in the transition phase, it's less trivial. If you look at the new person I have hired to develop the business of digital TV, in terms of sales and marketing, Nancy Goldberg, she is the person that have the internet view of mm -hmm. this business. And personally, I'm convinced that there are very interesting things to be developed. And at the end, it's like people need transportation, people need to get access to content. And even if you take in the internet world, video is the most popular type of elements that are consumed on the internet. So video is a constant. The question is how we monetize uh, the delivery of video. And that is one of the key questions. That is one of the key questions that, that will uh, mm -hmm. still occupy you for the next, for the next years, uh, I guess. And this brings me to the last question. Uh, to you personally and the future of André Kudelski in the company personally, uh, do you ever see yourself not working anymore because you're a very busy man and you work a lot, you travel a lot, but could it be that in 10, 15 years' time we can see you on a ranch in Phoenix, Arizona, not doing anything anymore? Or in... Uh, Switzerland, or in Switzerland some, in Lausanne, uh, or some skiing uh, yeah. in uh, high mountain. I, I would say, uh, yes, at one point in time, I, I will need to prepare my succession at Kudelski in a way that the company will continue to develop itself. Having said that, I have a lot of things on my agenda the day I'm not, uh, how to say, 100% working for Kudelski. So you don't have to work uh, no, no, uh, to be happy. There, there is, no, but there is so many things to be done. So I would say that in addition or in place of what I'm doing here, there are so many things to be done. So the life is so plenty of opportunities. That's something, uh, uh, there is no limit here about. So, Many things are things that I would have been interested to do. Mm -hmm. So even uh, when I have uh, chosen the route to, or let's say the career, to, to physics and after in computer science and to develop the business of Kudelski as it is today, that was another possible route is to become a doctor in medicine. So that would have been a completely different mm -hmm. route. And that, yeah, just, that are just two examples. I have enough interest in many things to occupy myself for quite some lives. Andre Kudelski, thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you.